the big advantage of hydrogen as an energy carrier and as a future fuel is that hydrogen can be produced from a vast amount of different resource, uh, resources or feedstocks, I should say. Um, today, um, as you might know, hydrogen is mainly uh, used in industry, so there's only um, uh, there's 98% uh, that is really used where it is produced in the uh, business of producing uh, ordinary fuels, desulfurization of fuels is, in, is, is one point, then uh, um, um, producing fertilizers, this is the big field, the second big one, and then other fields in the chemist, uh, chemistry uh, or chemical industry or in food production wherever you use hydrogen. So. Right up to now, most of the hydrogen in the world is produced from natural gas. Um, as you might know, natural gas, it's, it's mainly methane, so it's CH4, and you can take the four H's out of the, out of, uh, strip them uh, from, 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 the, from the carbon to produce hydrogen. Um, this is how it is done today, but hydrogen can easily also be produced from a lot of other feedstocks, mainly uh, renewables which is uh, like uh, things like hydropower, wind power, solar power, geothermal energy, uh, which means, and this is the benefit I want to, uh, to raise here, that you can produce hydrogen from those various feedstocks at the various locations in the world, meaning this uh, makes us, le us less dependent from fossil fuels and from the uh, countries today that are producing uh, those fuels, which, which are not uh, very uh, stable regions, as you, as you know. So uh, this, is, this is the big advantage we have. Uh, but let me just briefly, uh, coming back to this question of producing it from fossil fuels, um, the advantage of, of uh, the the system. So I just mentioned the advantages of the fuel. So the advantages of the system is not only that it's zero emission. The other advantage is that the efficiency of converting <coughs> chemical energy in the fuel to electrical energy at the wheels is very efficient. To just give you a number, this is the third generation, as I said, and this car already has an efficiency or offers an efficiency of 36% in the European driving cycle. And if you compare this to an uh, ordinary diesel direct injection engine, same car, same power, uh, this is around about 22%. And uh, the goal that we have, and we think that's, uh, that's uh, pretty much achievable, is in the end to get around about twice to twice the efficiency as of ordinary uh, internal combustion engines, which is around about 40%. Which means, in other words, you need half of the energy to travel a hundred kilometers as compared to uh, gasoline and diesel engines. Half of the energy, saving of course the energy that you use. And that is also the reason why uh, we pursue hydrogen. Because if you look at all the alternatives that you have uh, to internal combustion engines of today, it's always very important to not just say, look here, this is a zero emission vehicle and that's the story. So that's only one part of the story. The other part is how do you produce this, the fuel? Or in, in other words, what does it help you if you have a zero emission vehicle, but if the production of the fuel produces more CO2 emissions than you save in the vehicle? Then what we call the well-to-wheel energy chain, you know, production, well to tank, combined with the usage of the fuel, tank to wheel, on this full chain, well to wheels, the alternatives need in the end to be better than what we have today. Otherwise, you don't have a benefit. Then you have a zero emission vehicle, but not a zero emission fuel, so to speak. Um, but this is the good part of the story, since even if hydrogen was produced, like it is done today, from natural gas, and then used in a fuel cell vehicle, on a well to wheel chain, the CO2 emissions are already round about a 20 to 30% better as compared to today's uh, technology.